In this video, I uncover the biggest Overwatch scam that some of you may have fallen victim to, alongside doing a GTA and finding out who the CEO behind this whole product is, and more importantly, what can they, and you guys watching this video, learn from it. For those who don't know, I plan to cover Game Leap, a mogul in the gaming industry that you probably know for their guides on popular video games, but who also push a course costing 150 euros for lifetime access. So is it worth it? Let's find out. So this entire section is going to be off the cuff and some of this stuff I've already taken a look at whereas some of the other stuff will be my first time reaction to. Unfortunately though I will have to spend 13 euros and toss it down into the void for the sake of this video. The things I do for this channel, I swear. And now I have the paid version, I have unlocked every sort of guide, everything is you know, unlocked here. I genuinely think I'd rather be a Twitter super follower than a game league kill member if I'm being honest. Before I get into that, I want to cover a few things. So first of all, I think it's pretty manipulative that you're actually paying for all of the guides, like all of the courses here. Whereas in reality, if you're dead set on improvement at one game, why would I need th the other courses? Like, surely that's just unnecessary added value that I'm, I shouldn't, I'm not even wanting to pay for. And not even that, like, if I'm a support player, if I'm like a, a main support player, for example, I, I play Lucio Brig Mercy, I'm only gonna need a handful of these guides. Like, I don't need like, the fucking the tank DPS stuff. I don't need that. Why can't I pay for that separately? Why have they bulked it all into one big asking price of 150 euros? I, I assume it's because if they didn't do that, they couldn't charge these sort of annual and, or go away, these annual and monthly plans. So they have to bulk it up all into one so they can actually charge this. And I assume they'd be making less money. They, well, they have to be making less money. Um, if they were to separate to separate it out like this. You know, I, I don't mind people making paid courses uh, as long as they're good and as long as you're paying for what you actually want instead of paying for stuff that you actually don't really need. It's wasted money gone down the drain. And also, this 10-day money-back guarantee, why not make it 60 days? Like, there's, there's so much content that it's going to take me way longer than 10 days to absorb all of it and also implement it into my game. Like, I need I need more than 10 days for that. I don't know why they, they don't have it at 60 days. Maybe they're not as confident in their product. Who knows? Also, the free versus paid versions, I want to quickly cover that. So I also have another account here called Money Grabber, quite fittingly. And the free stuff that you get, generally speaking, are going to be the sort of general courses, like the Overwatch Psychology course, and these videos down here. And the paid stuff that's going to be locked behind a paywall are going to be these hero courses. So for example, we're going to take a look at the this Moira guide here um, in my paid version. And this is all locked behind a paywall. But yeah, with that covered, let's get on to the guides. Let's start off with Moira. Uh, the reason why I want to start off with Moira here is because she's the easiest hero in the game. And if you're a Moira main wanting to get better at Moira, I want to see whether you actually have to pay for this information or whether you can get it for free online, which by the way, you can. I've already made a Moira guide and there's tons of other Moira guides out there. I want to see whether this guy, Twiz, can actually bring something new to the table. Moira is by far one of the easiest heroes that you can pick up when you first start playing the game. However, there are some more intricate aspects to her kit that we're going to discuss in this video when it comes down to timing and ability usage. All right, so off the bat, there's already quite a lot of filler at the beginning, like there's 10, 20 seconds of filler. If I'm paying for this stuff, I want to have it like instantly. I, I want to have the information that condensed in as small a format in as short a time as possible, you know, for me to actually put it into improving my own gameplay. This, this entire moral guide is like an hour long. And titles like when to dump all healing, I can tell you when to dump all healing and I don't need to tell you it in five minutes. I'll tell you it right now. Dump all healing when your tanks are critical HP or when you need to farm coalescence. It's that simple. You don't, you don't need to pay 150 euros to get this information. Because your healing can heal multiple targets at the same time. This is obviously an ability that- All right, congrats boys, here we go. Amazing, amazing, amazing information, guys. I, I paid 13 euros to hear to heal my tanks absolutely game-changing. As a Moira, you're kind of expected to build your ult very quickly, and when you don't have a whole lot of healing, what are you supposed to do? Okay, well, twist Tommy. Da damage orbs. Damage, damage really, orbs can be really. incredibly so, so helpful. The two options on my kit to heal the damage. If I can't heal, I should damage. It, how is that worth 13 euros? How is that worth 150 euros? How is that information worth any money? That's, that's the most basic... I, I can't. Maybe it gets better throughout. They're really not pushing very hard and our tanks are staying pretty high HP. So now that my healing okay, is a little so bit- I, I like it. He's talking about his healing and stuff and his tanks are, you know, staying quite high HP. 
But look, look, look at the fight, right? They're going in, they're fortifying, the fight is already occurring, and this guy is a third down on his resource bar. Like, this is not good. This is terrible healing resource management. You need to have as full a bar as possible when the fight actually starts and gets out. Because now, the team are going in, and now now is when your tanks are going to need the extra healing. Because I wasn't really conserving it very well. I'm just going to deal some damage and, and, he, and, and he, briefly, he briefly mentions it. He wasn't conserving his seal bar you know, very well. But that, a bigger emphasis, emphasis needs to be put on that. Not the emphasis on dealing damage here. Because that's quite basic. That's quite, you know, that's not fight but changing, essentially. Notice how I'm kind of throwing my damage orbs whenever I get the opportunity. And this is because that we're not really taking a whole lot of damage. Now, I'm definitely the kind of well, person no, that... No, 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 no. You're, you're throwing damage damage orbs because the enemy team are not engaging that's why you're not taking damage this is description this is not analysis this is description he's describing what's going on here the reason why you're damage orbing is because the enemy team aren't engaging and they're not putting any pressure onto your tanks look at where the enemy team is your team are completely safe you can damage orb here for, fi for, for free right and when the enemy team finally go in that's when you'll have your your healer back you'll have your healer but when the enemy team actually goes in and they, they start doing stuff for now, you know, you're, po you're poking, you're posturing, that's when you can damage orb, you're fine to damage orb there. But this, but this isn't analysis, this is just description, like you're describing what's going on here. And by the way, this is paid, I'm, I'm paying for this. That damage orb just gained like at least 10%, maybe even 15%, and it's a pretty passive ability I may as well just do. You'll notice you how that, I'm really- you that, ladies and gentlemen, just, just throw your damage orb whenever. Just, just mindlessly throw your damage orb. No explanation as to why he's damage orbing. No, they... You see, you see, you see now, now is when you need heal orb. Now is when you need heal orb, because the enemy team are actually going in and pressuring the tanks. Your 60 HP, your Sigma's grasping, your recess fortify, the enemy team have good angles on your, on your core. Now you need to be heal orbing. Maybe get a few kills to help stagger the team fight. It's very nice he, on did, Moira did, did for you to push that? up with them. So for wait, instance, wait, this Sigma, he... pick up some stragglers or maybe get a few kills he, he to help stagger. He, had, he literally had an orb. Like, why not orb before you coalescence? For the team fight, oh it's face. very nice on Moira for you to push up with them. So for instance, this Sigma is trying to push up so maybe they can get a kill on this Ana or this Lucio, which are trying to push up. If he goes alone, sure, he might get some value, but he also could easily die. So if he has a Moira going with him, it makes it a lot safer for him. Not to mention the fact that I can deal pretty decent damage, throw a damage orb, try and get some value. Okay, this is not bad, this is not bad, you know, supporting angled pressure so your teammate doesn't die here. Like, if you're playing Brig here instead, this, the, the same principle would apply. Like, Sigma Brig is actually really, really powerful at sort of, like, holding angles because Brig sort of denies the sort of, you know, close range heroes like Genji, like Tracer, like Doomfist. You can sort of dive and pressure the Sigma and Lucio, by the way. Like, imagine if you're Sigma holding high ground and then Lucio's on you. Like, you need a Brig there to stun the Lucio so he, he doesn't boop you off high ground. So this advice here, not bad. Okay, so tip number one, don't play forward to DPS. Why? Why? Like, surely, like, if at the beginning of a fight, I can throw in a damage orb, right? Because when the team fight actually begins, I'll have my orb back off cooldown, so if my team gets pressured, I can heal orb, and I'll have the extra sort of ult charge that I would have gained from pushing up forward to DPS earlier on. So I think this is, again, way too vague. I'm Aim to be the last hero to die. Support, how, how, how do I do this? Always how, how, how do I do this? How do I aim to be the last hero to die? Surely that should be like every hero. Like, surely if I'm playing Zarya, right? I'm on high charge. My team has died. I want to get back. I want to be the last person to die because I want to maximize my ult charge on Zarya. And actually, I, I don't want to die. I want to get out of life on high charge so I can spam high energy right clicks from range to form my grab. Like... This is again too vague to Moira. Okay, I think I think I've had enough time watching this. I can't lie. So now let's go on to a uh, Reinhardt one. So for those who don't know, I recently released a Reinhardt guide or a collab with IOS Ducks on Reinhardt, and yeah, we'll, we'll just see you know how good this is. Um, which should I? Oh, there's so many videos, man. I don't I don't want to watch all this. When to, when to actually, okay, you know what, you know what, I'll, I'm going to summarise these titles so you, you guys, I don't have to watch this. Um, when, when to go for smaller shatters, when the enemy team are playing flank comps, like, you know, Tracer, Genji, that sort of thing, and you can't get, you can't be greedy with your shatter because uh, there's mobile heroes in the enemy team. How, how to dominate a cho how to destroy as Reinhardt, like, what are these titles? Like, these, this is just so vague. How, what is the difference between how to hold any choke as Reinhardt and how to dominate a choke? What, what is the difference? How to stop dying as Reinhardt. Don't fire strike below 300 HP. There you go. 
unironically though, like I believe like even Flats, like I think there's a clip of Flats just completely blowing up um, when he was on, he fire strike when he was on 200 HP or he swung when he was on 200 HP. I'll play it in the background, I can't remember. But yeah, they, they, even even top level Reinhardts will make the mistake. But yeah, I, I don't, I, I really don't want to go through this anymore, man. I might play a Sparlow clip here of um, Sparlow analyzing some, some game leap stuff. But yeah, I, I don't want to go through this. This is the dumbest video I have ever reviewed in Hammer Time. At least your Overwatch tried to, even if it was poorly executed and goofy, they tried to make their videos have some educational content in them. This is actively harmful. In fact, let's let's go through a, a, a high skill hero. Let's go through... It's Tracer, Tracer. Tracer's like the quintessential sort of hero. And it's Coach Mills doing this. Oh boy, Coach Mills. Tracer Fundamentals. Okay, so I I'm gonna watch. This is 13 minutes. I'm not gonna commentate over, th over the entire thing. It's gonna be painful to you and me as well. Um, so he says he's gonna cover Tracer Fundamentals here. I'm gonna watch the entire video and I'm gonna see whether he actually covers any of the fundamentals. Again, the fundamentals of Tracer are to shepherd squishies, control flanks, and if the, if the flanks are free, then you can go into backline heroes, then you can like dual squishies. That's the f sort of fundamental thing behind Tracer. Okay, so I just finished the 13 minute video and it was about as good as you'd expect. He talked about accuracy and movement in very vague terms, he never covered the true fundamental as to why you play Tracer, which is to control flanks and to control the map. He gave three very vague playstyles, which were to dual DPS, dual supports, or to poke tanks, which by the way, you should never be doing as your sole playstyle. And as usual, he never gave any reason as to which playstyle is better and when each playstyle is better. He did talk about Tracer's wasting abilities and timing your pressure with when your team engages, which was good, but as usual, it was bloated. You need to ask yourself whether this information, which is definitely not anywhere else on YouTube, is worth any money at all. Now I actually want to go through the coaches themselves, particularly Coach Mills, who doesn't even seem to have a Liquipedia page when coaching any team professionally at all, which is probably why the advice he gives is very surface level. Why would you ever want to pay for information from a guy who hasn't had any professional experience when there are people with said professional experience with much higher quality information, which is all free? Now, Game Leap do use professional players, but they're players, not coaches, meaning that they know how to play the game, but not necessarily how to teach it to others. Even Dante's Tracer Guide, and Dante is a rank 1 Tracer, doesn't teach you how to fundamentally play the hero until 13 minutes into the video. My big bone to pick is I was not happy at all that it took him almost 14 minutes into the VOD to mention how you play Tracer. You're the shepherd, you're playing on the outside, you're keeping everybody condensed, and you're going for any assassinations for people that split too far, and any squishes that split too far. Like, that. that's Tracer. I'm not sure whether Game Leap follows the same formula across other games, like Valorant or Apex, so if you're familiar with that scene, do leave some comments down below and I'll read them as usual, but for Overwatch at least, you'd be very dense to pay for any of this. So, when we talk about Game Leap improvements, firstly, have a longer money back guarantee, be confident in your product and give time for people to actually apply the information that you're selling. Secondly, split up the costs. Don't force people to buy everything in one bulk package because they're not going to use most of it. Thirdly, actually make your stuff quality by either learning from, or even better, using professional coaches, not just players, to make top-notch content that you can fairly charge for. Use examples, be specific, but also mention what the hero is fundamentally supposed to do, and cut the bloatware. And that brings me nicely onto what you, the viewer, can do, which is to support these creators. Overwatch 2 is just around the corner and we cannot afford to have these talented, dedicated coaches and players leave the game and let mediocre content continue to dominate the scene. I've already talked about and used a lot of content from these guys, so the links will be down below, as well as some videos of my own talking about them. Before I finish off though, I want to shed some light on the CEO of Game Leap, the mastermind behind it all, and that's just a guy called Ivan Georgiev, who actually used to be a former pro player, and more importantly, former pro coach at World of Warcraft. What's interesting though, is that in his about section on LinkedIn, he mentions that he wants Game Leap to be a tool to give players the infrastructure to becoming a professional esports player. And I don't doubt for a second that Ivan actually wanted this when he started out Game Leap, but as we've seen, Game Leap 
at least the Overwatch version, is far from allowing players to be at an esports level, so I assume as Game Leap expanded and got bigger, the quality of information had to have become more surface level. It'd be wishful thinking for Game Leap in the future to hire pro coaches, or at least to learn from their style of content, but who knows. Anything is possible. Anyways, hopefully I earn back my 13 euros from this video, and if you want the best quality educational content when Overwatch 2 drops, consider dropping a sub and checking out my educational starter pack. Until next time.